Important Tips in Psychological Research Dr. Yaya El Magazi Professor Emeritus at Auburn University, Alabama, USA Former Dean of Science, Technology, Math, Engineering at Ocean County College, New Jersey a visiting professor at a number of universities including Rowan University, Keene University, and Montclair University, New Jersey, USA. The Essence of Psychological Research The Info to Info Cycle The first term of information implies the raw information, the unprocessed information, the subjective information, and the second part, which is the other information, is what I describe as the processed or meaningful information. Moving from raw information to processed or meaningful information requires two basic steps. The first step is to take the raw information which may be subjective statements or some numbers that have no meaning and convert that into data. Data means factual information. It has to be expressed in well-defined format. If we begin with numbers as the raw information, then the data has to be uh, processed numbers. These are numbers that are associated uh, with definitions uh, as well as units. Data can be huge, can be large, and data can exhibit some odd values or outliers. Then to complete the info to info cycle, we have to convert data into statistics. Statistics means reducing the massive amount of data that we may have down to few uh, statistics or few measures or few parameters that can describe the entire population. This happens via statistical analysis. And if the analysis are done properly, then the interpretation of the outcomes of these analysis will definitely reveal processed or meaningful information. So that is what I mean by the info to info cycle. Starting with raw information or numbers, rumors, people are saying things that perhaps are not totally educated, they are guessing things, then we have to study the claim or the raw information to verify it by converting it into data which involves perhaps sampling, perhaps collecting data from some external sources, perhaps relying on the government data, but we have to take uh, uh, the cycle to a real data, factual information. Then we take this data, analyze it, and convert it into statistics and via the few parameters or the few measures of statistics that we will produce which describe the whole population we can reveal processed and meaningful information the info to info cycle let's take an example poverty in the USA People debate a great deal about the status of poverty in the USA. Some people who are living uh, well in the USA do not even realize that the USA suffers poverty or having poor people. Is there a poverty in the USA? Uh, 
in order to convert the general information about poverty in this country into processed and meaningful information we have to take the subjective meaning of poverty into data which is the second part of the cycle we can have the data from uh, uh, the census bureau uh, we can make our own study surveying uh, people uh, poverty or living status there are many ways to collect data and there are many ways to sample people for the purpose of the study and then we can analyze the data and there are many ways to analyze the data which is the statistical aspect of the info to info cycle there are thresholds of poverty in every country indeed somebody living at the poverty level or under the poverty level in the USA may be indeed a rich guy in another country now worldwide if you are making less than two dollars a day then you are definitely living under the universal poverty but of course that doesn't apply to the USA and as you can see the threshold decided by the Census Bureau we can see that a single person making $12,000 is actually uh, 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 at the line of poverty uh, if we have two people it may be 15 16 thousand if we have three people it may be 18 or 19 thousand and of course the number of children added uh, to the family uh, can alter the threshold of the poverty level now we can handle the data which is typically provided by the Census Bureau of the USA in many different ways. We can look at poverty by race. And population-wise, as most of us know, there is about 68% uh, of the uh, people living in the USA that belong to the white race. Uh, there is about 12% that belongs to the black race. And the Hispanic uh, race is 15% and then the Asian race which is increasing in this country is about 5% now I want to emphasize an important point here which is the use of a pie chart because this is a graphical display that we often use in statistics the key criteria of using a pie chart is when you have variable values that will collectively add up to a hundred percent so we are talking about a whole population consisting of white black hispanic asian if you collectively add up these you will end up with a hundred percent that is when the pie chart makes a great deal of sense on the other hand if we are looking at the poverty level in each one of these groups then we will see that we are using a different graphical display which is the bar chart and you can see the bar chart here is a two-dimensional graph the horizontal axis represent the variables or the category here is white black Asian Hispanic and the vertical axis represent the percentage of poverty in each category as represented by a bar so you can see how different graphical displays means different things here we see that in the black community we have 26.26.2 26 percent uh, people living at the poverty or lower than the poverty level now remember this community represented 12 percent of the entire US population the Hispanic community had 24 percent people living at the poverty or lower than the poverty level and as you recall the Hispanic community represented about 15 percent of the US population now the white community which as we showed a minute ago represents 
68% of the entire U.S. population only had about 12.7% of people living under poverty. So we have a problem here. Now, our interpretation to this problem is what's going to lead us to the meaningful or processed information. And different people may have different interpretations of this outcome. If we divide the U.S. population by gender, we have about 51% female and 49% male. And as you can see, we are representing that by a pie chart which is the most suitable or appropriate uh, graphical display for this type of data. On the other hand, if we're looking at the poverty level at each gender, we use in the bar chart. We have at the female level or the female gender, we have 16.1% and the male is 13.4%. Personally, I see it as we have a problem. It may look like a 3% or 2.5% only, but we have a problem that female in the USA uh, exhibit more poverty uh, condition than the male. Now, we, we may be able to divide the population by, by age. And as we can see here using the pie chart, the appropriate display for this case, we have 62% uh, uh, of the U.S. population uh, at the age from 18 to 64. We have 24% of the population at the age of under 18. And we have 14% of the population at 65 and older. Now, if we look at these three categories using a bar chart, we can see that the under 18 has 21.1% uh, 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 poverty level. The 18 to 64 have, has 13.5% and the 65 and older has 10 percent so what we're doing here is we are really trying to form the complete info to info cycle so starting with some general information converting that into data in this case by race by gender by age analyzing the data using statistical analysis in this case we used simple analysis such as determining the percent of people living under poverty in each category using simple graphs such as pie charts and bar charts we were able to reveal some important information what we call a processed or meaningful information for example, black and Hispanic groups have the highest poverty level, 25 to 26%. Female suffers more poverty than male by about 2 to 3%. Under 18 years of age have the highest poverty level, more than 20%. And so on. And we will learn later on how to collect more useful data and how to perform more detailed statistical analysis to reveal much more information than that. But the idea now is we have to understand the concept of info to info cycle. From raw data, raw information, all the way to meaningful information, going through meaningful data, statistical analysis, statistics, and then interpretation of the results of the statistical outcomes. Here is another example, the traffic in the USA. Traffic is getting worse. Once again, to deal with this issue, 
we have to collect the data and the data can come from external sources it can come from highway departments everywhere in the different states uh, it can come from the Department of Transportation, the Federal Department of this, uh, Transportation. Or we can do our own study to collect data on traffic issues. Uh, perhaps we can look at the percent of delay, uh, the number of people that get stuck in, in traffic uh, inside towns and on the highways in different regions, in different uh, cities, in crowded cities, in small cities, and so on. It can be a detailed set of data. And then we do the statistics. We perform simple descriptive statistics, as we will show you later on. We can calculate a percent of delay time in different regions and so on. So we can actually get meaningful information. This meaningful information may include what's been reported in recent years, such as Americans get delayed annually 4.7 billion hours in traffic serious problem of high magnitude it may require building of more highways and more infrastructure and it is worth it considering the huge loss of time and the money associated with the traffic issue another example is woman today thriving or struggling or suffering The only way to answer this question or this raw information is by surveying women. And some studies have surveyed women from all over the world. So we need data. And the data in this case is a survey of hundreds, maybe thousands, maybe millions of women around the world. And the statistics here is also important because this data need to be analyzed so that we can determine the percent of female that are thriving, the percent that are struggling, and the percent that are suffering. And we can see a simple pie chart that can reveal all the meaningful information that we are seeking. And as we can see in this example worldwide, we have 63% of women saying that they are struggling. And only 24% are thriving and 13% are really suffering. Well, this is worldwide. What if we do this study on a country like the USA or in some of the rich countries in Europe? Would we get the same results? What if we do this study on younger age? That's female under 24 years of age. Obviously, you will get different results. Every time I do that in my class with young women in my class, I find that the majority of them are thriving. They have hopes for the future. So once again, the type of data, the nature of data, and the type of analysis that we perform can affect the outcome, can affect our processed information can make or break the meaning of the information we produce. Another example. Marriage life is simply great. That's a claim. You can hear a lot of people saying that. Is it really great? Maybe you want to verify that. So that is the raw information. We take that into data. And data may be looking at the different social sources 
about the percent of separation, the number of years that uh, marriage lasts for different age groups, for different races, uh, 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 for different uh, uh, regions in the country, for different countries, and so on. And the data can be analyzed to reveal the percent of separation by age, the percent of separation by religion, the percent of separation by regions. That is how we close the cycle. Going into our interpretation, some people are saying that 57% of couples married today are likely to separate next year. Some data and statistics are showing that marriage after the age of 26, 81% were still married 20 years later, while marriage before age of 26, only 65% were still married 20 years later. These are meaningful information. And they are related to many social issues. That is what I meant by the info to info cycle.